Hello everyone and welcome back to another Planetarium live stream. My name is Jessica, I'm the director of the Planetarium and with me tonight is one of our students who I will let say hi uh, and introduce himself. Hi, I'm Louise, I'm a chemical engineering student. I just realized you had your last astronomy day. I did have my last astronomy oh, day. Oh, that makes me so That's sad. Why... Oh yeah, I was happy to be outside without all the chaos, so I was okay with that. <laughs> It was, still, it was still a good time, though. <laughs> Complete tangent. It just it just dawned on me. Mm -hmm. um, for those who don't know, Luis is graduating at the end of the semester. Yep. So yep. Um, three weeks. No, it is. It is. Oh it my is. gosh. <laughs> now I'm all sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. yeah, feels like there's a lot to do still, but oh well. That that's. That's the end of the semester. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on to some happier topics. Um, since we are in a new month, happy April, everyone. Um, although for those of you in Minnesota with us, it's definitely still feeling more like winter and not so much like like a nice spring April. Uh, since we just had you know a major winter storm pass through here yesterday. <laughs> um. <laughs> It's been crazy. It's been a crazy winter. Um, but since it is April, that means we have new astronomical objects and events for our night sky. And so we are going to go over those today. Um, as always, if you have any questions throughout the show, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Uh, Louise will keep an eye on those and let me know if any questions come up. Um, keep in mind, there is a bit of a delay. So if we don't get to your question right away, we will get to it at the end. And with that, let me switch on over. There I am. Okay. Um, so as I said, we are doing our what's up to take a look at the astronomical events happening in April. And as we do most months, we are going to start off with what the moon is doing. Um, and our first big moon phase is actually happening today. Um, today is the full moon. It's known as the pink moon, which I can already hear the questions and the social media starting up. The, it being called pink moon has nothing to do with the color that the moon will be. Um, each full moon in each month is given a specific name, and those names come from a variety of different sources, um, and different cultures have their own names for these different full moons, but they tend to reflect kind of what's going on at that time of year. So in the case of the pink moon, it's supposed to represent the, you know, really pretty pink flowers that start to bloom in the spring. Um, so that's where that name comes from. I know for the Anishinaabe, um, it's also the like boiling sap moon because it's the time of year that they begin to boil the, the maple sap into maple syrup. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where that name comes from. It's not going to look pink tonight. Uh, so just getting that out there. Um, but so yeah, we start off with our full moon tonight. Then in about a week on the 13th, we have the third quarter moon. Uh, 19th is going to be the new moon. And then we will end the month on the 27th with our first quarter moon. And you can see here how the uh, different moon phases are up at different times of the day and night. And that's just determined by kind of where the moon is in its orbit in relation to the sun and the earth. All right, moving on now, let's take a look at what the planets are doing. And I've got to say, it's a slightly boring month for planets. Um, over in the evening sky, just after sunset, if you look over to the west, you will see Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Um, the best time to try and catch Mercury is actually going to be April 11th, because that's when it's at its furthest from the sun. So it will be the easiest to see it. So from now until the 11th, Mercury is going to slowly be moving further away from the sun. And then after the 11th, it's going to slowly be moving back towards the sun, which is going to make it harder to see for the second half of the month. 
Venus is continuing its journey further and further away from the sun over in our western evening sky. So it's going to continue to be a great object for evening viewing right after sunset. Mars is also still hanging out over in the western sky after sunset, so it will be up to view. Um, and Uranus is hanging out there right, right close to the horizon. Um, with a telescope, you may be able to catch sight of it but uh, you can't see it with your naked eye. Um, and then over in our morning sky, um, we're really not going to have anything until later in the month. Saturn is slowly making its way into our pre-dawn sky over in the east. It's starting out the month being really close to the horizon, really close to the sun, making it incredibly difficult to see. Um, as you can see here, by the end of the month, it's going to be a bit further away. Um, so we'll be able to see it, but it's still going to be really low on the horizon. So if you have a lot of trees or anything um, in your vicinity, you may not see it very well. But it will be there. Um, in the morning sky. And other than that, um, Jupiter and Neptune are not currently visible as they are both hanging out with the sun right now. So that is what our planets are doing for this month. Um, uh, next big astronomical event that we have happening is a solar eclipse on the 20th. Now, before anyone gets hopes up, it is not going to be visible for us here in, um, excuse me, us here in North America, in the U.S., um, but as the internet does, there will probably be some streams uh, showing the solar eclipse, so I did at least want to make sure that you all were aware that this is going on. So solar eclipses happen during a new moon when the Earth, Moon, and Sun line up just right so that the Moon is able to block the Sun from our view. And essentially it casts a shadow on the Earth. And depending on what part of the Moon's shadow you're in, you're going to see a slightly different eclipse. So if you fall in the Moon's umbra, this is the area of total shadow, you will see most likely a total solar eclipse. Now this does only last for a couple minutes while the umbra is over you and it doesn't move. Um, so you only see that for just a little while. Um, but then for those in the penumbra, that's when you see a partial solar eclipse. So the Moon only covers part of the Sun. Um, now, Obviously, we don't have a solar eclipse every month with every new moon, and that's because um, the moon is tilted slightly. Its orbit is tilted slightly with respect to the sun and the earth. So it's only about twice a year that it lines up perfectly to give us an eclipse. Um, so these are those different types I was talking about. If you're in the penumbra, you get a partial eclipse. If you're in the umbra, you get a total eclipse. Occasionally, though, you will not get a total. You'll get an annular eclipse. And this happens because the distances between the Earth, Moon, and Sun are not the same all the time. They do vary slightly. So sometimes we will have a solar eclipse where the Moon isn't quite just as big as the Sun, and so it isn't able to fully block the Sun. And so you end up seeing a little ring or annulus of light around the Moon, and that's when you get an annular eclipse. So for the eclipse happening on the 20th, um, this is where it's going to be visible, mostly over in um, near Australia and New Zealand. Um, so only a very, very small portion here, this very dark red, is going to see a total solar eclipse everywhere else around is going to be seeing a partial. And just on the edges here, on these two edges, um, you actually will get an annular eclipse. This is a very special, we call hybrid eclipse, um, because we're actually going to have people that see all three types. Usually it's just two. Usually it's partial and total or partial and annular. Very rarely do we get partial, total, and annular. Um, this one happens to be just the right conditions for that to happen. So if you are interested in catching a stream of this, um, we will share any of those that do pop up. Um, this is kind of the timing, so it's going to be um, later at night for us here in Duluth. 
um, starting the night of April 19th, heading into the early mornings of April 20th. Um, so if you're interested in catching a stream, these are kind of the timings for that and when you might see uh, those streams pop up. All right. Uh, next thing we have this month is a meteor shower. It's been a little while since we've had one. Meteor showers tend to happen when the Earth passes through the debris trail left behind by a comet, and all is and as all of that debris falls through the Earth's atmosphere, it heats up and glows, and we see it as a streak of light that we call a meteor, or sometimes people call it a shooting star. So this month's meteor shower is the Lyrids, which runs from April 16th through April 29th. Um, the peak of the meteor shower is actually going to happen around 8 p.m. Central Time on April 22nd. Now, for us here in Duluth, it is still going to be pretty light outside, um, so we won't really have good skies for the true peak. But any time that night of um, the night of April 22nd into the early morning of April 23rd is going to be a good time to go out. Um, particularly, you're going to want to wait until it does get a little bit later um, because you want the constellation Lyra, which is where all of the meteors are going to appear to originate from. You want that to be up and visible and high in the sky in order to see good meteor trails. Um, now, this is a moderate shower, um, which tends to have 15 to 20 meteors per hour at peak. Um, and some of these meteors can be exceptionally bright fireballs. Um, and we're in luck uh, for this year's Lyrids. We will not have a moon con to contend with, so you should have nice dark skies to view the meteor shower. All right. And lastly, let's take a look at what the International Space Station is doing. Um, for us here in Duluth, uh, we don't have too many Passovers this month, um, and they're all happening kind of at the end of the month. Um, if you're not in Duluth, you can always go to this website here, heavens-above.com. It's also linked in the video description. Um, and put in your location, and it will show you the same sort of information for where you are. Um, so when looking at this to find a good time to go out and see the International Space Station, you're going to look at the date and the time, and then check the brightness. Now this is in magnitudes, which is kind of a backward scale. So the smaller the number, the brighter it's going to be. So this negative 3.6 or negative 3.8, those are gonna be really bright views of the International Space Station. And of course, once you have one that you like, you can click on the date and it will take you to a new page that has a map of the sky showing the path and times that the International Space Station will be overhead, and also a table with some more information as well. Um, so with that, you can easily get out and catch a glimpse of the International Space Station this month. All right, and that brings us to the end of our astronomical events. Um, not too terribly much going on in our April sky, um, although it's very exciting to have a meteor shower again, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, so to wrap us up, I will uh, kind of share what our schedule is here for the planetarium. Um, so Friday evening, we are doing a journey through the solar system. Uh, Saturday, we start a new set of shows for the month of April. Our uh, family show is Hercules and Other Superhero Stars, uh, which will be Saturdays at 2 p.m. And at 7 p.m. on Saturdays, we have our general public show, which is Dynamic Earth. And then, of course, you can always catch us here uh, again next week on Wednesday for our April Constellation show. Um, and just to wrap things up, uh, I do have a quick trailer for Dynamic Earth. Um, I don't have one for Hercules and other superhero stars, unfortunately. But I can give you a little peek at what our Saturday evening program is going to be like. Welcome to planet Earth. I'm Liam Neeson. Join me on a journey into the workings of Earth's great life support system, the global climate.
learn what makes our world so conducive to life and what ruined our sister planet, Venus. Explore the winds, the oceans, and the forces of nature that shape this dynamic Earth. Another great program um, for our Saturday evening show there. All right, and that brings me to the end of what I've got. So uh, let's take a look and see if we've got any questions. I'm not seeing any. Louise, did I miss any? I don't think you did see anything either so oh, I see one I don't know why that didn't come up on my phone but um I have a question about commissioning a special show in relation to an art exhibition I'm working on do you do special shows we do um if you will send us an email um we can start conversations of what that might be like um but yeah we we do special shows so that actually sounds really cool so yes, definitely please please send us an email because um, I'm I'm curious to learn more about this. Um, and then another question: um, besides the moon, what other celestial happenings affect climate? That's a really good question. Um, there is some debate over how much the sun's activity, um, like whether how much sunspots it has, how many flares it has. Um, there's some debate over if the sun's activity cycle does have an effect on our climate. Um, because we do see um, there was a time period back in, I can't remember if it was the 15 or 1600s, um, when there was a period that we call the Marauder Minimum, I think, where we had, like, there were no sunspots on the sun for an extended period of time. Um, and that coincided with a time that Europe was having exceptionally low temperatures, which is called the mini ice age um, or the little ice age or something like that. Um, so there seems to be some correlation, but we it's not very well understood. Um, so, yeah. It's kind of interesting. I've always, I've always been interested, like intrigued by that. Also, just the fact that there were no sunspots for like a couple decades. That's weird. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And we don't know why. It just, it just stopped for a little while. Guess I'll just have to wait until it happens again. <laughs> Hopefully. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Um. Well, let's do just another minute for any other questions that come through. Um, I will say thank you to everyone who came out to astronomy day. Um, we had a fantastic evening, um, so much more support than we anticipated. It was very crowded, um, but very fun. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully everyone enjoyed it as well. Um, definitely one for the records. I think that's the most people we've had at an astronomy day since I started here. Um, definitely a good turnout. Yeah. It was, good people to talk to. It was amazing. So if you came out, thank you so much. Um, it, it was a really fun night. All right. Why does it never stop snowing this year? I don't know. But, I mean, serious talk, climate change, it affects all of the weather patterns, not just making the average temperature higher. Um, 
any changes in global temperatures is going to affect uh, ocean currents and wind currents, which is going to affect um, regional climates and affect uh, weather patterns. Uh, and that's quite frankly a, a res what we're seeing. Uh, any new highlights from the big telescope? Uh, from James Webb, I'm assuming. Um, I will be honest, I have not paid much attention in the past week because it's been full just prep for last weekend and then recovering from last weekend. <laughs> Um, oh, but yeah. we will for sure have updates on James Webb um, at our next Ask an Astronomer, which will be in two weeks. All right. I think I think we're caught up on questions. So I think we will wrap it up there. Uh, thank you again, everyone, so much for joining us. Um, we hope you have some things to look forward to in the night sky. Uh, again, next week, we'll be taking a look at the constellations you can see. Um, and yeah, you can always check our either Facebook or website for the upcoming um, show schedules for this month. So yeah, thanks again, uh, everyone. We hope you have a great evening and a great rest of your week. And we'll see you next time. So bye, everyone.